Welcome to CADWIND. This video will show you how to create the model of a pressure vessel, how to calculate a winding pattern on it, how to create the part program for the filament winding machine, and how to export the laminate data to FEA software. We'll start by creating the mandrel model. Our mandrel model will have a diameter of 100 millimeters, a cylindrical length of 300 millimeters, ellipsoid shaped dome ends, You can also create the mandrel model manually or import it via DXF from CAD software. Here you can see our mandrel model. We can zoom in, zoom out, reset the zoom. We can also change the view orientation, right view, front view, isometric view, and perspective. We can rotate the mandrel model uh, using the mouse. The right mouse button will rotate the mandrel to any angle. The left mouse button will pan. And the scroll wheel on your mouse can be used to zoom in, zoom out. We can reset the view using the back arrow button. We have several options for how to display the mandrel. Either we can show it with a solid plus mesh as it is now, no mandrel, the mesh only, a faceted mandrel, a solid mandrel, or solid plus mesh that we had originally. The next step is to enter the winding parameters. We will start by entering the material parameters. In this example, we'll use three rovings with a width of 4 mm each, making a total bandwidth of 12 mm. We'll use a fiber volume content of 57%, a TEX value of 800 grams per kilometer, a fiber density of 1.77, and resin density of 1.2 grams per cubic centimeter. We'll use a non geodesic winding with a winding angle of 17 degrees, a friction factor of 0 0.1, a pattern number of 2 with a skip index of 1. We'll use 100% covering on the mandrel and we'll use the default settings for the turning zones and starting frame. So you can see in a matter of seconds CADWIND has created the uh, winding path for this mandrel and has displayed it on the screen. You notice you can still zoom in and zoom out and rotate the mandrel and pan uh, just like you could before. Next comes the calculation of the part program for the winding machine. But first we have to tell CADWIND a little bit about your machine and your controller. We do this in the machine parameters window. As you can see, CAD1 can be easily set up for any winding machine just by changing these parameters. CAD1 can also be set up for any controller by altering the uh, control format definition file. In this way, CAD1 can be configured for any combination of winding machine and controller. But this setup need only be done once for each machine and is not usually changed again. After we've completed the setup, we're now ready to make the part program for the machine. We do this by clicking on the uh, post processing parameters window. In the post processing parameters, we have several options for the way in which we want the machine to move in order to achieve the desired winding and the speed at which we want the machine to move. The calculation mode in the top left gives you four different options for the path that the machine will take to achieve this winding. The velocity calculation will affect the feed rate or the speed of the machine. We have some other options here for the distance of the head, the filter value, the positioning length, the number of axes that your machine has and you wish CAD1 to calculate, the yaw mode if you have a your axis on your machine and the format of the part program that we're going to make 
either in a CAD1 control data format, CCDF, or a part program that's suitable for your particular winding machine. In this example, we use the CAD1 control data format. If you're making a program for real, you would use the part program format. When we're happy that the post-processing parameters are all correct, we simply click control data to make the part program and to start the machine simulation. You can see that CADWIND automatically begins a uh, three-dimensional animated simulation of your machine motion. We can stop the uh, simulation using the stop button, play using the play button, rewind or play backwards using the back button. We can step forward one step at a time, single step forward or single step backwards and we can loop the animation. In this box we uh, have the ability to control the speed of the animation 100% of machine speed or if we would like the animation to uh, run faster we can put in a number that's higher than 100% if we'd like to to watch the animation in slow motion we can uh, put in a number below 100% you can also use the up and down arrow buttons here to achieve the same thing. We have a number of options of uh, what to display on the screen. Do we want the uh, coordinates system to be displayed? The dimensions to give us an idea of the scale. Uh, we'll change the mandrel to solid. We can display a mandrel marker, which is this blue and red lines. We can look at the frame numbers or the frame positions. The point numbers, of which there are usually several hundred points. We can look at the vectors. The machine axes is a useful simulation tool that uh, draws lines that represents the range of motion available on each of the uh, axes that you have present on your machine. We can also look at the floor of the workshop underneath. Let's go to a perspective view to show you the floor underneath the machine. The numerical data box will show you the position of the machine and the fiber at every point in the simulation. And you can see the what simulation of this uh, layer is now finished. We can also analyze the part program using CAD1's graphing function. To access this feature, just click Post Processing Display. Choose the DAT file that you created earlier when you clicked Control Data. And you can see that uh, a series of graphs appears on the screen in front of you. There's one graph line for every axis of your machine by default, uh, but you can turn the axes on and off simply by checking or unchecking the boxes to the left. For example, if we wanted to look in detail at the carriage axis mo motion, we can choose the carriage axis on the left. You can see that the carriage goes up to the end, comes back to the beginning and back again. This is great for analyzing the motion of the machine, checking for any jerking motion or any unwanted uh, machine movements. You can see that this, gra this graph is a nice smooth line which indicates that the motion for this axis should probably be pretty free of jerking. We can also graph the velocity of each axis. Again we can have any number of axes on the screen at the same time. And we can graph the acceleration of each axis or the change in velocity from one block to the next. 
on the x-axis we have some options uh, what do we want to display on the x-axis time block number or line number in the part program or we can graph the position of one axis versus any of the other axes for example we can look at the motion of the cross carriage against the, cro the position of the mandrel we can zoom in on any part of the graph by using the left mouse button to draw a box around the area of interest going from left to right and we can zoom out again by drawing a box going from right to left the last feature I want to show you is the export to FEA option to do this we need to first go into the winding options select save laminate data choose a name for the laminate data file this uh, example will use example vessel layer 1 and simply click start winding this will create a laminate data file that then you can you can then use to uh, turn into an FEA data you do this by using the file menu create FEA data option simply choose the laminate, da the laminate data, and you can use any number of files with any number of winding angles. I've created three layers for this example, layer 1, 2 and 3, that all represent different winding angles on the same mandrel. You can stack these layers in any order you like, which will then be accurately represented in your FEA model. Choose the format. For your FEA software, there are several options there. Nestran, Abacus, Lucis, Cosmos Works, Ansys. I'm going to use Nastran. Choose a, a file name. I'm going to call this one example pressure vessel.dat. So the FEA data has been successfully created. So now I'm going to switch from CADWIND to uh, Strand 7, which is my FEA software, to show you the, the FEA file that we've created. So now we have the FEA software loaded on the screen. As mentioned, this is Strand 7, my software, but it could be uh, any FEA software, almost. So I'm simply going to import the geometry and the laminate that we've just created in CADWIND. you can see we have a three-dimensional pressure vessel laminate already on the screen it's almost ready to analyze we just need to really apply loads and restraints and uh, some material properties which I will apply some loads quickly so we'll select all the elements and apply a uh, face pressure load of 20 MPA or 200 bar you can see the brown arrows here representing the pressure load that's now been applied I'll turn them off for clarity we'll, reply, we'll apply some restraints to some of the nodes sufficient restraints to stop the model from moving globally and that's all and we'll just need one at the other end So now we just need to apply some material properties, uh, modulus and so on. You notice that there's only one ply. It, by default it has a modulus of 130,000 MPA. It's a little bit high for standard modulus carbon, depending on your volume fraction of course. So we'll just make an adjustment to that. Um, the thickness, we don't need to apply a thickness, CADWINE's already done that at the laminate level. 
Uh, now we should be ready to solve. Now that our FEA analysis has been solved, we can load the results. And let's just plot, for argument's sake, the stresses in the 1-1 one, one direction. We'll increase the displacement so that we can see it. So there we have it. In a matter of minutes, we've managed to create an FE analysis for the complete pressure vessel with uh, three layers in this case, but as many layers as you'd like with as many different winding angles as, as you like. And it was quite easy thanks to the CAD Wind export to FEA option.